the whole like Belfast parkour scene really started. Uh, well, it started for me September 2004, and that's when I really found the waterfront hall itself. Just walking through town one day with friends, and I found the architecture really interesting. And I always remember seeing behind the scenes of David Bell's very famous outfit Rush Hour. But I've, nobody's seen this but me. I've, I've asked around so many times, and nobody has ever seen this clip where he jumps from a fire exit to a lamppost. And I always remember it was Lorraine Kelly on GMTV presenting it and saying, This is the New York uh, coming from France and the set to become the new biggest sport. And my dad called me in to show me it. And even my dad was like, That's, oh, that's full of nonsense. Nobody's going to do that. That's a crazy idea. And I was like, Well, that's really cool. And months went on, and nobody, you know, never even thought about it, never gave it a second thought, but it always played in the back of my head, just what he done. And when I was told there was no wires, no mats, no whatever, I was just like, that's amazing that somebody has the confidence and the body to do that. Not body looking wise, I mean, he's physically made it capable, you know. Don't fancy him. Uh, but um, <clears throat> time went on, and Jump London, Jump London, <laughs> Jump London and Jump Britain came out, starring Sebastian Foucault, Johan Vero, and I apologise for not knowing the other character, can't remember his name right now. Stefan Vero was supposed to star in them, but uh, he had a severe injury in one of his legs. And uh, I, I think Jump London was aired without me even knowing about it. And then I was called in one day, by my, like, same thing again, my dad called me in, just like, son, come here see this, it's called Jump Britain or something. And this man ran, and done what they called the cat leap. And I was like, that's amazing, look at how far he just jumped. And then he landed and climbed up that wall. And again, it wouldn't matter if there was mats on the ground because the mats didn't make him do it. It was just amazing. And uh, I just remember playing around with these simple ideas and me tricks and finding walls that were only three and four foot apart, the 16 at the time. I was jumping between them and I was like, oh, that's, that's really interesting. That's really good. You know, let's, oh, let's, let's, let's take this further. You know, it was never about the idea of finding more tricks. It was more about the idea of taking what I could already do and taking it further and five and a half years later that's still what I'm doing it's not all about learning a, a whole new arsenal of tricks it's about just progressing what I can already do so yeah around about September 2004 is when I came to the waterfront and friends would be sitting there and they'd be doing anything They'd mainly sitting there and smoking and I, just, I had no interest in that and uh, I just started climbing up walls and saying like could I reach that wall it didn't matter how ugly it looked while I was doing it you know if it looked all fancy or like in the movies it just could I do it and I kept progressing with that idea. And the whole, the whole waterfront hall just became, for the next five and a half years, the training ground where I honed my skills, and it's been great fun ever since. Uh, from September 2004, I trained on my own, just randomly, but it wasn't until like January 2005, and I spoke to a few other people who delved into it a bit, and they were telling me about websites where, it wasn't even videos, it wasn't even YouTube videos, just where you could find photographs of people doing it, and they had names for it, and I was like, cool, now I can put names to these things I'm doing, and yeah, I like that one, I'll try that out, and so it helped a wee bit, but it was still, what was great about doing it in the days I'd done it was that you played around with what you could do. Somebody didn't come and tell you, these are the basics, these are some of the things that are commonly found in videos or commonly practiced by uh, a trusser, a name for a person who follows parkour, we just used our bodies, we just done whatever we thought was right. All we knew was is that right, the idea is get over the wall or get between the walls or, you know, find a way to get over this even though it's far higher than the, you know, oh, there's there's a rail in beside it, maybe if I climb up the rail and then on the wall, you know, there was no technical names, there was no technical ability, it was just can you do it. But uh, yeah, at the end of 2005 when we asked four people from Dublin to come up uh, via the internet and we had a big jam, it was great fun, couldn't have been any more than 20 of us at the most and then we went down to Dublin, same kind of number, seven of us from up here went down, great fun. So and then we actually came to know each other, and then when we started real, like training in large groups, people started to look at it and thought, maybe this is normal, maybe they're not just Bucky just jumping off walls. And so younger people were joining in, they are asking us what he's doing, we told them this is what we're doing, we want to show us some basics that we learned, yeah we want to see some basics that you learned, and then they joined in and then they became the new trusters of Belfast, Ireland, whatever, and before you knew it, 2006, people were showing up at Waterfront, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, and staying to Late, way, way late into the evening, like 7, 8 o'clock at night, the train, and numbers as big as 30, 40 young people between the age of about 12 to 19, 20. <coughs> and uh, it stayed like that for quite some time. And then in the middle of roughly 2007 is when it sort of died down. And nowadays it sort of became a bit underground again. Uh, for the past year, 2009, all of 2009, Belfast Parkour has been very 
like a, a close group of friends, close family of like friends, just a small group that understand each other well and train well, and we all know what we're capable of and what we can do. And know it's very normal for us to come in next week and go, I've progressed to this, I've tried this training out, do you want to try it out? Because there only is like seven or eight of us. And uh, because we've been barred from places like Waterfront Hall and City Hall for reasons that aren't our fault, and uh, reasons that aren't really anyone's fault, just times are changing and they're becoming a bit more serious about the whole antisocial behaviour. And, and it is real, it's just they think we're doing it as well, when really we're training a real sport. But uh, bar parkour is becoming a bit underground again, and it's actually quite fun that it's become underground again. But because uh, it does separate the people who just treat it as a newbie trend and trick to do for an hour or two, to the people who do take it serious and do want to train it and do have a lot of fun doing it. You know, as, as serious as we speak about it, we've, we've so much fun doing it. It's our lifestyle. It's our social life. We absolutely love it. It's the greatest fun ever. But. Uh, that's what it's became nowadays, now we're in 2010, and it doesn't look like it's going to change much. But that doesn't stop new people coming along. New people have stumbled across the website, pkir.com, P-K-I-R-E, uh, which is Parkour Irish Forums. And they do ask, you know, where can I begin and where do I start? And, uh, but a lot of uh, Northern Ireland's been quite quiet for quite some time. It's been mainly people like Dublin and uh, uh, southern parts of Ireland. But we do meet up regularly and we do travel from town to town and city to city and train together. Just in the weather, the winter like it is now, it's quite cold and wet, you know, people do die down a bit. It's understandable, it's not much fun, can't, can't do as much as you'd like to. The parkour itself was developed by a man named David Bell. He started it at the age of 15. He took the word parkour from a phrase lepako, that's spelled P-A-R-C-O-U-R, and it's a term that describes when, when in an obstacle course, obstacle coursing, if that's even a word, when he was in the French Marines for seven and a half years, as to what I, to my knowledge anyway, from what I've researched, and he was also in the fire service for a year and a half, and uh, which is great because that, that sort of plays homage to the fact that what he first developed it for, the idea of can you use the body, can it be used in a situation, no matter what the situation be, it's just about you actually using it. It's not something specific, like, you know, if somebody does football is good at football, somebody that does... Uh, I don't know, swimming's good at swimming, somebody who's good at cycling's good at cycling. His idea was can the body be good just to be used? Can it, can it be strong? Can it be fast? Can it be uh, so, used almost like a tool? And I love that idea. And being something like the Marines and Fire Service, you know, he, I'm pretty sure he proved himself, especially seeing as the Marines are one of the hardest things to join. You know, I've, I've, uh, I was in Glasgow Naval Base in October 2009 and meeting some of the Marines and training with them and just some of the things they asked me to do, crazy, you know, they're real physically fit men and he stuck it out for seven and a half years and then of course successfully joined the fire service. There's people in their lives don't even successfully join one or the other and he joined both. Later on, the whole free running term, uh, to my, my, this is also my opinion, the whole free running style of including flips and everything never really happened until it was introduced to England. You know, Sebastian Fulcon had been calling the free run for a long time, and because Sebastian Fulcon has this wonderful view about just testing your body, it is great the idea of using it in a situation, but testing it, just going outside and thinking, can I jump between these two walls? Can I climb up that wall? Can I, can I just use my body? Can it be? Well, let, let me test it. Let's. Let, this here's a more fun way to do it. You know, it's like somebody wanting to see if they're good at running. They're going to go out running. He's just looking at it as a, an overall utilization of the body, and because he uses the phrase quite a lot. Uh, you know, it's what you want to do, incorporate what you want. I think people took the term a little bit too literal, and gym, gymnasts and martial artists and break dancers, you know, they were, you can clearly see the relation to parkour amongst physical activities like that, and there's no harm in that at all. I think what happened is it's just they got merged together a bit too quickly in the whole excitement of it, and I think that's where the flips came in, and it does annoy me when people say things like, parkour or free running is parkour with flips and especially when you see in videos like somebody will do a vault or two and then a load of flatland tricks because no matter what Leota Discipline, LADD, free running, parkour, PK, whatever you want to call it, it always talks about traversing through point A to point B whether that be efficient, fluent, aesthetic, whatever, flared, it's always about moving from point A to point B and when somebody puts a load of flatland tricks in a video on grass and cause it a free running video, it does it does it doesn't just annoy me. People all around the world who do parkour get very annoyed at it or free running, you know, whatever you want to call it, they do get annoyed at it. Because it's not the whole it's not the traversing through your environment part. It is just basically taking gymnastics outside. And although the the flips are very impressive and you no know, that's great that people can do things like that with their body. I'm sure people are worried of a sort of dilution in the art and that it's going to get too far away from the idea of what it really is and it's just the physical movement and the physical utilization of your body in an urban environment. Parkour very quickly became like you know one of the things, or, or free running, because you know anyone's impressed by flips and that. So using both, you know, that's just great. Uh, and as far as media goes, it's great for action sequences and movies, you know. And 
it, it did become like a big flavour of the month and it still is being used in movies nowadays because it is so young. Parkour is only about 20 years old, 21 years old and that's dating it back to like its real days of you know its creator and being called parkour and everything and actually if he was in the marines you know it probably wasn't called parkour until about 10 years ago 12 years ago nowadays you will see a lot of sort of parkour and free running in the movies and it's very typical you know it's it works so well in chase scenes and action sequences and anything with martial art fighting and uh, even i've done a bit of it you know uh, just having the body physically capable to do it why not and it's a lot of fun i've worked with george clark and a company called yellow fever productions for the past about two two and a half years and we've made two feature lengths and a load of shorts and they've been great fun the kids series uh, Battle of the Bone, where I've done a lot of parkour sequences, and this fantastic paper mill scene. I absolutely loved it. That was probably my favourite day ever in Battle of the Bone. Uh, we made a movie recently called The Nackery. It was great fun. Uh, I, got, I got to try loads of things, loads of stunt work, flipping, falls, being put through doors, things like that. Uh, martial art fighting. I've done martial arts before. I actually don't even like violence. <laughs> don't like fighting, but it doesn't mean it's not great fun. And, and it all works on camera. And uh, Yeah, just because they're, they're a low-budget company, and... They, they just they like making things like that that indie indie film making you know it's you don't need the big massive major movie sets you know it's it's what can you what can you give and I can give my physical ability and I really enjoy that so just the idea of being physical you know par parkour just changed me completely anyone starting parkour should remember like just what what you see in the films not there even me like I've been training five and a half years and even when I do the simple things I'm doing that with five and a half years experience you know you need to remember like when you watch movies like B13 and David Bell's doing these astonishing things, no wires or whatever, you have to remember that man has like 15, 16 years experience. You can't be going out there and jumping off story high buildings straight away, you're going to ruin your knees. So start off slow and, and stay safe and work your strength up. Uh, exercising is a very good way to do it, there's people call it conditioning, where you strengthen the body. Uh, I do, I go to the gym regularly, when, or at least when I can, it could be, it could be as, as little as once every other week, but it doesn't stop me from conditioning and exercising the body, because I know it's important to have it physically prepared for sports like that. And uh, just to remember, you know, start off with the basics, and start off with them small, and progress them up, and don't, don't think it's like, you know, it's all about learning mad new tricks, it's actually, it's actually like chess, you know, a moment to learn, lifetime to master. You're just taking what you can do, just much better. And to this day, that's the way I train. You know, I took what I could do from day one, and now I'm just making it much better. You know, and sometimes that is just adding that extra inch or two to your precision jumps or cat leaps or uh, that extra foot of height when popping up a wall. That sometimes that is your progression. Uh, other ways of progression of noticing it is, or noticing your progression, sorry, is you know if you can do it faster or easier or something we look out for is silence. You know, if you can do it a lot quieter, you're clearly more control, muscle control, coordination precision everything uh, so it's just a big progression and prog progression in general just progress yourself make yourself physically faster fitter stronger daft punk you can take the same walls you've jumped over thousands of times and just find new ways to train on them or do new things to train on them you know it's and the beauty of parkour that's that's probably the thing i love about parkour so much from day one is that there's no special equipment there's no requirement to buy anything special maybe a good pair of shoes well when i say maybe you should uh, you don't have to go anywhere special. It's just just you and what you can do and your environment. Just go out and have fun where you can. I come to places like Waterfront specifically because they have great architecture for training parkour. But you know you can go anywhere. Me and two of my friends, Paul and Taggart, we we train around my area all the time. And it, there's just like a house in the state. You know, it's it's just brick walls and alleyways and you know there's bin bags and wheelie bins everywhere and broken puddles you know it's just just it's your environment it's where you take it you know you don't you don't find parkour you you just do it it's just there parkour isn't something you you know it's not like a skate park you go into a skate park there we go i've got a skate park parkour is where you know parkour is more you more so than the actual environment parkour is what you can do not where you're going to do it